over to you. Yeah, thank you. Hey, hi, everyone. So first of all, yeah, happy new year to everyone. Same to you, Pritam. Happy new year, Pritam. Yeah, hi, Pritam. Good afternoon. Yeah. Good afternoon. Nice to see you all. So uh, let's start with uh, CSS training. So you all know about the CSS. So here we are uh, going to brush those things, learn few new things, which will uh, help you to uh, do more CSS effectively. So uh, here uh, today, I break the whole schedule by uh, day wise. So today this is the first day. And uh, today we will uh, know about these five things. So the CSS basic, what is CSS? So what is CSS? You all know what is CSS. The full form of uh, CSS is uh, the cascading style sheet. So it is a used to uh, styling the HTML page as well as the in our modern uh, website and ap web applications as well as the uh, native applications, uh, sorry, hybrid applications. We are using CSS in different, different form. So, so without the uh, CSS uh, in raw HTML file, uh, it looks uh, a pretty bad when we apply the CSS, it looks pretty good. The whole HTML things. So you can imagine a car uh, which has an engine uh, and hold the body structure is there. The car is fully functional, but it don't has paint. It don't have uh, the light, windshield, and other things. So without that, the car does not look good. So that style CSS thing is like that. When you it uh, it create uh, the application more attractive, uh, more usable. Okay, so uh, so what is new in CSS? So earlier we are using uh, CSS two in 2000, uh, 2011, 12 or earlier. The CSS three has started. Uh, today we are using still CSS three. So CSS3 gradually improve its uh, uh, things. It has introduced many things in uh, today. So it has now uh, different different element which we can use uh, in throughout our application. And earlier, uh, few things are very difficult to do, like rounded corners, box shadow. Those things are very difficult in HTML. But today, it is very easy. To do those things with help of CSS3. So in CSS3, uh, many new things are there. Few are few have listed here, like uh, rounded corners, box shadow, the colors element, uh, box sizing, the concept of box sizing, opacity. Uh, so one more beautiful things which is introduced in CSS3 later that is the CSS. Gradients earlier we can we can we we only use uh, gradients from uh, uh, image. We can create a gradient only help of image. Currently we can use uh, gradient with help of CSS three. And animation is the uh, one one of the more powerful things which has been introduced in CSS three. Uh, we we have uh, today we have uh, multi column layout flex box one of the uh, great thing CSS3 has. Mm. So those things are new to CSS3 and media query as well. Uh, we don't have any media query. We can't handle uh, uh, different uh, web application in different different environment in different application. Today we can do that easily uh, with the help of media queries. Mm. So this, uh, these are few of uh, new things in CSS3. Mm. So now going forward, uh, to the next thing. So how, first of all, how we can add CSS in our projects? So 
you all are use, uh, using in web application the css is there uh, you all worked on them in different different time different project when required but how we can uh, today we will learn to uh, build css and work on css from beginning so how we can add a css file or css in a html document there are mainly three ways one is inline which all the developers are <laughs> using throughout their uh, uh, throughout their journey uh, in various way uh, one is internal and uh, other is external so what is inline css which is what is internal css and what is external css so uh, anyone uh, of you can uh, tell me what is the inline css what is the inline css anyone which we put in the hello go ahead declaring for that tag inline css yeah so uh, the css which we are using uh, in the in the tag directly right we yes. write css style property then put their property and values on the uh, tags itself so that are inline css so first we check uh, let me close this So here uh, I have added, created a folder uh, for the day one. So whatever we learned today, I will upload that on a drive. Uh, you can check that later. So that is a day one folder. And inside that I have created, uh, it is a basic structure of a, a HTML, uh, the index.html, one HTML file. Okay. And I have created a CSS folder. So keep the all uh, style file, CSS file inside that. I have a font folder. I will explain that later. And I have a images folder, which I used uh, for keeping up the images. So currently, we don't have any images. So this is a basic HTML file. So what is inline CSS? What is, uh, so started with inline CSS. So this is the inline css right which we add in the tag so we can add this in, on any html tag i have added on h1 tag you can add h1 p body uh, body whatever html tag is available so you can add that uh, tag uh, that uh, css to that tag so like uh, how it how we can write it uh, we have to add style equal to then within the double quote we have to add the property so suppose i i, I want to add color to the h1 tag so i select color then the value so suppose the value should be Zero 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 zero, which stands for black. I am saved that file and going to to that folder, run the HTML file. Let me comment this thing. So this is the heading tag. We have two elements in the HTML currently. We have the one heading tag and one uh, P tag. So let me add more thing here, like I'm putting a. Uh, the whole thing inside the div 
and inside that the Now I'm refreshing the page. So on that div, I'm adding a specific width. I now we have to use width. Then I am keeping it like 1024 px. Okay. And don't uh don't go to the property and value right now. So I'm just uh, adding that to show you. You may know all these things, but I'm just repeating it itself once. So this way we can add any property to do any tag of the HTML. So this is the inline style, inline uh, style of adding uh, CSS on the HTML. Any question? No. So going to the next part. So next part is how to add the CSS on internal so internal nothing but we are adding css on html file in the head section internally so we kept the whole css all the css file all the css things on a particular that html file inside that html file on the head section so we have to, have to add the style inside the style inside the style style tag on the head section we have to add the tags and the uh, selector then property then value all these things we declare those things and it will impact it that particular thing for example let me keep it here so i'm i'm adding a bag uh, background color body hmm. then check what is changing okay so you can see the background color of the html file has been changed it will now gray so let me change the font color as well. So add font color, font color, the color is, I'm selecting this color, refresh, it will not change because then I the font color is changing so we can add the css this way also internally inside the that particular html on head section inside the style tag but remember this style this css will not work on the other html file at all but now we can use so what is the difference so in inline css this style property will if effect only on that particular tag but on the internal css if we add that on the head section we can reuse that reuse that value or class to the throughout that file only so take uh, i'm adding a class
now i use this class earlier it has a inline css now i am adding class see now i am giving a width to now my uh, div has been created okay so this is the div i am now creating another div and put the same class so we can reuse that particular class throughout this file but if you go create another html file and use that sample class file to that html file then it will not impact that div at all so this is the second way to add css on the html file this is the internal css so first we learn about the inline css second thing is internal css now we are going to add the css externally so what is the way so we we first of all we have created a css folder inside the css file we have created a css file styles of css nothing is there that blank file okay so so to add a css on a html file external external css file so we have to declare the link tag then that is what kind of file it is we have to declare that that is a style sheet then link Choose the particular folder, then the file, and it's done. Now, I comment this internal completely, internal thing. Okay. And we don't have any internal style right now. We don't have any inline style right now now refresh that page it has nothing no style now let's add the style on the let's copy the entire thing How it is working so what is the advantage of the external css file that the main advantage is so we can reuse this class anywhere on the application wherever we link that html file on the that css file we can use all the class all the classes all the styles on that page just we have to add that css file this way on the html now i remove the internal thing and it is perfectly working let's suppose i am creating uh, one more document
I've created about.html. I have added the whole thing here. Now the same class, the simple class, sample class here and here. So go to the this is about.html. Okay, so let me change. This is the home page and this is the about us page, but we have created only a single class, the sample class, okay, and using both files. This is the most required thing, important thing for the external CSS. So we have now we know how to add the CSS file inline way, extern internally, and external way. Any question? No, all clear. Okay, good. So this thing you already know. I'm just revising it. So now um, let me make it large. Okay. So now I'm going to a little deeper. So in CSS, we can use color. We all use color in our CSS files, but we can use uh, colors in this six way six way we can use colors on css okay so first one is color with color keyword like red green black aqua blue gold lime so those color values will directly affect the taste we can add that color name red green black blue olive aqua on the CSS, but that is not at all recommended never use that color value the, the, the those color will hard coded value the red green black on the html file that is not recommended don't do that the second how we can add the color we can add rgb value on the css rgb value so what is rgb r stand for red g for green b for blue so rgb value so rg with rgb value we can add any color let's go to a example uh, I have uh, added a extension here to show you the all color values. That is a color picker. You can use that. So here uh, we choose a color. Okay. So this is the color blue. Okay. Here we can see the RGU value of that. So if you copy that, and now I'm copying that and apply. To my CSS. So color. Let's change the color value to I have copied the entire code. So RGV red, green, blue. Okay. Then 864 and 232. 
that is the respective value of the red green and blue now check what happened okay so that color value added to the style and it is working properly now change one more color with rgb let's change the heading color to rgb to let's pick the pick this color copy that color code and change the h1 tag value to work with rgb code we have to initialize the rgb then the value of that color particularly it's working so this is the rgb how we can use that write rgb then inside that bracket we have to add the value of r g and b it will then it will work the next is r g b a so what is r g b and what is r g b a r g b is red green black and blue and r g b a is we are adding a alpha property to the r g b we are adding a alpha property to the r g b So now I have uh, on back RGBA, comma, point nine. So it has value to one to zero so we can add one one means point one that is ten percent point two mean twenty point three means thirty so and so and so forth to point nine then the one if we add one then the alpha will be one i am adding point two here so the change of color it will more light if we change that to one now we will on the darker side let's make it 0.5 is on the lighter side so 0.1 to 0.9 then one it is gradually increasing its opacity the alpha the alpha property of the color that is RGBA. So how we can use that? Right, we have RGB zero 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 and point five. It is a. It is also a black, but fifty percent with fifty percent opacity. The fifty percent uh, alpha of the black. So, so we are we we all use th this kind of things on the pop up background. You all know the pop up background is opacity is fifty percent. So, so we use there on the background color with RGBA zero 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 point half. Like let's uh, so that 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 will work here like this. We can add that on the background color as well. If I add that on background color, RGBA. It is not pure black. Uh, it, it is black.
So this way we can use this property RGPA. Now uh, HSL, okay. U HSL stands for hue, saturation, and lightness. That is this way we can use uh, the color, the hue, saturation, and lightness. Again, go to color. I'm going to the color picker and choose any color. You will get the value of the HSL. You can use that on the HTML. I'm choosing that. Added that on the border. That color is added on the border with the HSL value. And the HSL A is similar to the RGPA. It will add one alpha property to the HSL. Use saturation lightness and then alpha 0.3. The same way we have added alpha on the RGBA, it will work on the same way 0 0.3, 0 0.2, 0 0.1. The higher uh, the maximum stands one and most used style is hexadecimal value the color has a hexadecimal value we can add that directly choose any i'm choosing any color okay all color has a hexadecimal value i'm choosing this color this is the hexadecimal value copy that and add on the background. It's a decimal color always start with the hashtag. Hash. Extra decimal color always start with a hash. It started with hash, then the six digit value, color value. We have added the hexadecimal in, uh, but what is the difference? We have added six digit here, six numbers after hash, but we add only three here. Why? You all know when the first three and last three value are repeated, then we can only add three that we work as six digit, like zero, zero, zero. 000 60 zero is here that stands for black back now i remove 30 and it will work because it is a repetitive repetitive value so where the color value is repetitive like 6669993 ccc dd bbb so in those cases we can add only 3 that will work as if full hexadecimal value. Going to the next segment, any question on the color values? Any question on colors? One is the, the extension, Chrome extension is required at the time of development. We also need that extension. And second, why you did not, did not use the color name like red, black? Why it is not recommended? Uh, the hard coded red, black, blue is not recommended. Earlier we are we are using that also in uh, in uh, 2000 2002 uh, onwards or five six we that time we use red green black because that time we don't have uh, we can we can't use the hexadecimal value on the web uh, web uh, that time we use red black uh, all the hard coded name but now when we can we can uh, change we can uh, select any color. On the red, uh, red, black, green, on those color plate, we have only limited number of color. You, you can, you, you, you can't use this color. Uh, any color we can't add that time. That's why we are avoid 
told to avoid that hard coded name red green black aqua alpha um, lime you on uh, once we go to the, the web page designing or uh, creating html you will get a different kind of uh, color well color so that color you, you can't use with those names and the extension uh, the extension uh, you can use uh, when we use uh, when we are developing uh, any html or any web application we will uh, choose the colors uh, from the xd or photoshop file psd file or any uh, or figma they they are they have declared the color values we use those for development purpose you can use this uh, color picker tools with the help of these tools you can pick any color of, on the available on the page like uh, you can choose any color on with the help of this page what is the color of these so it is a useful tool you can use that okay, thank you any more question till now what i have explained with color and all these things so i'm taking it as no going forward with font interesting thing so the font styling a major thing uh, on the ui end how uh, different different font we are using in the application different for heading different for the body content oh. so earlier uh, we are only using a uh, three four set of font what which is which are available on the uh, system as well those are called system fonts hmm. so nowadays uh, we can use any almost any fonts uh, for the website or web application so that is a revolutionary thing uh, on css3 we can add a uh, different 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 stylish font on our web page or web applications rather so we can use uh, fonts in three way so first and uh, easiest way to use fonts is that regular system fonts system fonts means which fonts are uh, installed in system uh, by default it is coming with the uh, of the with the uh, os operating system those are called system fonts so that is widely uh, available on the any system any mac or windows any system so those fonts are available like arial georgia times new roman those are very common name to everyone so those fonts are called system fonts so for those that thing we uh, we don't need to anything to do so why can write here let me comment this thing We don't need to. I'm declaring font family. Then use time new roman time serif. That is a set of font. Just declare that font. It will work these times new roman and all these uh all these are font family are system font uh, these are all system fonts which are available here okay you can use vardana impact georgia arial trebuchet ms okay you see the franklin gothic so these are system forms these are available widely available on the every system almost in every system so for these fonts we don't need to do anything just declare that font and it will available render on the on the web browser like let, let me choose trebuchet ms earlier the trebuchet ms was not a system font with windows 10 and 11 as i remember windows uh, started from windows uh, 7 so trebuchet ms is a system font 
prior to that on uh, xp on or vista trebuchet was on a non system font we have to embed that font to use trebuchet image on the web application so this is a trebuchet image font uh can use other set of font like um, good good font is georgia is also a very good font we widely used this is a georgia so these are system font these are available on the system we just need to uh, declare that font name and you can use that if if that uh, if the designer ui ux designer used any of the system font you can use simply that just mention that font family name font name on the font family against font family and you can use that font okay so this is the system font let's go to uh, go to the next part which is non system font so non non system fonts those fonts which are not available on the system by default so those are non system font so uh now we can categorize the non system font in uh two type one is uh, google font you can use the google font a uh, few fonts are available with google library so we can use those google fonts those we call google fonts so we can use that those fonts or some fonts which are uh, not available on google library but uh, in few cases we added them uh, on the website for styling purpose those fonts we will uh, generate the files and then font uh, then use on the application uh, i am going one by one first google font just go to google and type google fonts okay go to the fonts.google.com okay. this is fonts.google.com okay go to the list of fonts first step and you can choose those fonts let me choose uh, oswald now i'm choose to i choose oswald okay this font i want to use or uh, ux uh, designer has been added on the his design i got the name oswald i search on um, google that oswald i find uh, the oswald font is google font now i am adding that google font on my application so how we can do that so we got the oswald font now i am scroll down we will get all that different type of oswald font so starting with 200 200 means uh, that light extra light 200 property light 300 regular medium semi bold bold so all these types are here i check that uh, design that i need a uh, few of them so i choose uh, 200 okay i added to 200 click just click on the plus icon it will add i add 400 then i add uh, regular and i add the semi bold as well and bold okay so on my whole whole application i find that uh, these four kind of font i have on my xg entire xg design so i added them so you can add that uh, more later that is not an issue so and i, ch I choose this four kind uh, four type of font okay now what i need to do uh, the all what i have been choose that comes on the here this is different uh let remove the earlier okay. oswald so uh, now review oswald is added okay just like shopping cart we can add the style uh, uh now copy that link the font link in your HTML. 
I have copied the font link on HTML. Okay. And the font name is Oswald. Okay. So the font family property, the CSS tools I have added now. I'm um, replace with my earlier one. Now on body, I have added what font family. Okay. So I have added font family on my body, Oswald. Okay. Now let's check. So the, uh, the whole thing is changed into the Oswald font. So what I have added. Oswald. Okay. So this is now Oswald font. What I have been doing, uh, I have added the link of that font. Here is the link Google is fonts.googleapis.com CSS family. Here is the family declared. What is this? These are the type of font. What I have choose 200, 400, 600 and 700. Okay. So if I remove one here from here, Oswald, and I remove the 200. Okay. Now I copy the link. See, 200 is not here. 200 is not here. Okay. So now I have 400, 600, and 700. I can use them on my application, like on H1. I add value. Uh, onto it, 800. So I have added. 800 to the H1. It's, it's I have added 400. Okay. 400. See. Earlier it was 800. Now it is 400. Okay. Uh, let me change the color to black. So earlier it was for 800 and now it is 400. So 400 is regular, 200 is thin and 800 is bold. Same bold is also there 600. Those are the value of the font. So on all font, you, you can have the, those value 400, 200, 800, 700. More than 400 is on the bolder side. Now, we have added the uh, Google link on the HTML directly. But uh, we observe that in many applications, uh, these external links are not permitted on the Sonar Cube or, or any uh, testing application. And thing. these external links are not permitted. These are uh, occur as an issue as an error. So on those places, we can edit the font uh, on a different way. We can add that font directly. Earlier, we have added on the as a link, just like uh, we have added external CSS link. We have added one more external link to the HTML file. That is a font uh, for font, the Google link. OK. Now, you can directly import that font in our, in your CSS. So it will not get, uh, it will not, uh, uh, it will, they, if you use this way, 
uh, then you will not get the, that error that external you can't use the external error on the sonar cube or any other applications so you can use that uh, external link inside you can import that external link inside the uh, css file it will work on same way. So let's remove this. Take what happened. It's not working right now. The Oswald is not rendering on the web page. Now I uncomment this. Now it's working properly. So both are working same way. You can use one of them as per convenience. So this is this way we can use the Google font link. Any any font any font listing listed on the Google, you can use them. Just select that font, copy the external link or internal import link on the inside the yeah, and mention that font family name wherever you use can use the font font font. Now one more interesting thing is you can use multiple font you can import multiple font now i choose this font now i'm going back to the home page and choose another one mm, let's choose roboto slab okay. i'm adding the lighter version of roboto slab and the bold version okay now see here the Oswald is first, then Roboto Slab. Okay. You can add three, four kind of font this way. Okay. Now see here, if you copy the link from the Google uh, fonts.google.com, you will get the two font name. The family, first is Oswald, then they are wet. 400, 600, 700, then another and family Roboto plus lab. So two fonts are added here. So now test Roboto slab. So, okay. So Roboto slab. Here is the font name. Copy the font name. I have added on the body. On the body, I have added the Oswald font. Okay. Now uh, on the A different class so font I have added this is the class okay and inside that class I have added font family roboto slab and on HTML file copy the div And instead of sample class, add it robot of font. Okay. Now refresh that. Okay. I need to add the background. See, here is the uh, color. Here is the Oswald font, and the below one is rendered, the whole div is rendered as a robot font. So you can use multiple Google font in one uh, web page or one, one application. Okay. So this way we can use the Roboto multiple Google font. Another way is uh, the fonts which are available not available on the Google font. You can Im, uh, embed them in your application. How we can embed them? 
go to uh, Google and write font paste generator. So the famous font page, one of the most famous font page generator is font squiddle. You can use that. Okay. Okay. You can upload, you have to upload your non-system font here. Okay. So I have uh, downloaded a non-system font. I have downloaded a non-system font that is Wirecraft. This font look like this. This is a uh, non-system font, not Google font. Okay. So go to fontsquirrel.com and web font generator. Upload that font. Here you got three options: basic, optimal, expert. This, these are the on file size that thing click on the terms and condition and download your kit once the kit downloaded ah uh, okay so extract that kit You will got these files, specimen files. We run this, this, oh, extract it. Okay. Wirecraft demo. You have these files. Okay. Now just add that font. Uh, you will get a font here. Those two fonts, the non system fonts here, Wirecraft, WebFont, WOFF, OOF, and OOF2. These two fonts you can have on that extracted uh, folder. Okay. Copy those font. Okay. And kept in your font folder. I have added those. And one more thing you need to do you have just mentioned that font property. Font family, we have to mention that font name. And one more thing you need to do that is you have to mention that copy the whole font face property. Okay. And add it on your this is these are the font face property okay i have added here and now you can easily render that so let me here is the font Two and then same thing. See? The non system fan font has been added on my web page. Let increase the font size a little bit. bit. Now it is 16. Body font size I'm increasing to 25. So it is a non system font, first of all. We are that this font is not available on the Google, but designer has added that font on the design. So I have to add that on my 
web page. How, how we can add that? Just simply ask that font file from the designer. He or she has that on their system. Once we got that file, go to the font squiddle with font generator, okay? upload that font, then download that package. Keep that two file on the font folder and inside the font folder. Hmm. Add that font face property on your style sheet and use that font variable. You can use on the body or you can use on any div, any particular class, anywhere. Remove from body and Add it here. So now it will be generic and it will work as well. So this in this three way we can use font. Regular system font, what is available on the system in on every system, Google fonts, and third one is the custom font. Interesting thing, custom font. Okay. So uh one more thing is left for two days so i will uh add that tomorrow the css and the accessibility it will take time uh tomorrow i will uh continue from here the css and accessibility so any any question on the uh, color and the front end any question from anyone No. No, I'm good. No, I'm yes, good. You're saying something. We have said that uh, no question. No. Oh. oh, good. So today we have completed a uh, few known things, few unknown things. Okay. So I'm repeating once more. Uh, the ways we can add uh, CSS on the HTML, the color values, how we can add the color values on HTML or CSS, and fonts, the three types of fonts, the system font, Google font, and the custom font. Okay. Tomorrow, uh, we will start uh, from the CSS and the accessibility part, and we'll go onward. Thank you. Have a great day. Bye. Thanks. Thanks. Thank you. Bye. Thank you. Thank you.